Hello, my name is Sarah Kanipa Bang and I am the president of Co-op Shared Branching FSCC, a wholly owned subsidiary of Co-op Financial Services. Some of you may know that Co-op Financial Services is the largest credit union service organization in the United States and it is most definitely the leader in payment services for credit unions there. Thank you for inviting me to address your forum. It's an honor for me and for Co-op to be a part of this program. I'm just sorry I can't be there in person in beautiful Talon. Right now in the United States, we're in a transition between payment technologies. It appears that traditional magnetic stripe cards are, are facing extinction in the face of EMV and mobile. Now, although I think we can safely say that cards aren't going away anytime soon, how does, does that affect a traditional payments company, the size and scope of co-op? How are we able to move forward in these uncertain times? How do we support existing models and interchange while developing the new technologies credit unions need for their members? Some of the answers can be found throughout our development in, into the world's largest QSO. As we watch the tremendous progress Baltic Shared Services is making and the potential for expansion in the world of payments in Europe, those of us at Co-op see a bit of ourselves in, in your efforts. In our over 30 years of growth and development, we applied a number of strategies that have positioned us well for the changing payments world we find ourselves in today. I'm hoping that the lessons we learned will be of use to you as you move forward. But first, please indulge me as we take a look at where Co-op is today. This is Co-op today. We have 3,500 client credit unions. That's actually more than half of all the credit unions in, in the United States. 1,200 of those client credit unions are member owners. We are a cooperative and we use the cooperative principles uh, to operate and um, it's made us very successful, I must say. We have three major business lines, uh, starting with 30,000 co-op network ATMs. 9,000 of those ATMs are deposit taking, which is very important for us. We also have 5,000 shared branch locations and over 2,000 24 by 7 self-service kiosks throughout the country. One of the things that we do at co-op is we um, aggressively support our existing lines of business which has allowed us uh, to maintain a client satisfaction rate of, of over 8.78 uh, um, and which is really remarkable uh, and something we're very proud of. We also have uh, 50 million consumer account holders. This is well over half of all of the credit union members in the United States. So over half of the, the members, credit union members in the United States have access or use a co-op product or service. And then finally, um, I, as you look there, there to the bottom right, you'll see uh, last year we uh, returned to our, our, our uh, member owners a 30 $0.5 million total in patronage. Uh, this is outstanding, but it is not unusual for us. The reason I'm showing you these numbers is because where you are today is not, is not that much different than where we were in our early development. The difference is with your understanding of the current payments world and technology, you have the ability to leapfrog over some of the steps we had to take to get where we are. However, the choices we made early on set the stage for our transitions into this in our transition into this new payments world. The lessons we learned ensured our early success. So here's where we stand as of today. More credit unions choose co-op than any other provider, more solutions than any other provider, more consumer account holders than any other provider, more convenience and more integration for our credit unions. So, in the future, here's where we're headed. We're a financial technology convenience hub for credit unions. Credit unions using co-op services are the most convenient credit unions in the United States, but this bullet goes beyond access convenience. Co-op is, is a one-stop shop for technology convenience. In the same way, Baltic Shared Services is leveraging your technology, uh, payments technology, we're leveraging our business lines to further advance the credit union movement. 
we're repeatedly asking ourselves, what else can we do with this technology? For example, our shared branch interface is the rails on which our P2P product offerings are built. Now, of course, we're, we're expanding that, but suddenly the technology that brought Credit Union's 5,000 branches is also now bringing them over 2,000 24x7 kiosks, a 24 by 7 call center, mobile, text, and P2P. A credit union needs only one or two connections to get access to all these services with co-op. We're also a buffer against dis disintermediation. With the PayPal's and other P P2P offerings out there, uh, disintermediation is a real threat. We're using our technology to help credit unions stay relevant. If a member doesn't have to go elsewhere to gain access for his money, he won't. So we're always asking ourselves, how do we ensure a member can stay with his credit union for all of his payments needs? We're also a multi-network aggregator. We know we can't and shouldn't rebuild every network out there, but we can connect our network to others. This, is our, this has been our strategy from day one. It is a strategy that has made co-op a force multiplier for the credit union movement for decades. In our earliest days, we connected to the STAR network, and just now I mentioned the 2024x7 self-service kiosk networks. Both of these are examples of how, of how being a network aggregator creates, makes us a, a, a force multiplier. We bring the members that networks need. This is a very powerful negotiating tool for us. We're also a supplier of new technology for credit unions. We develop technology on behalf of all of our credit unions. In the U.S., one of the greatest risks a credit union can take is developing technology on its own. Now, certainly there are some credit unions that can and have done it and done it well, but they also face all the risks and liability alone. With 1,200 shareholders and 3,500 client customers, we can develop, develop it all for them and at a fraction of the, co the cost. So how did we get here? We started small. Although our industry wasn't that big back then, uh, back in 1981, we did have over 20,000 credit unions in the United States, States, which seems like a lot, but they were very small in comparison to where they are today. The average asset of a, assets of a credit union back in 1981 was just 3.5 million, where today it's over 160 million in assets. The average membership back in 1981 was a mere 2,200 uh, members per credit union. Today, it's closer to 15,000 members per credit union. And finally, uh, just 16% of our credit unions, of credit unions in the United States, offered transaction accounts or checking. Uh, of course, now today we're at uh, about 80% of our credit unions offering um, transaction accounts. And then finally, uh, there, were o there were only proprietary ATM networks. In other words, uh, networks that we weren't able to uh, participate in. So how did we begin? Well, it started simply, but I would never say it was easy. Co-op's beginnings are firmly rooted in electronic funds transfer, or EFT. I'm distinguishing EFT from payments in the following way. EFT is card-based, where payments are account-based. Although a lot of people use EFT and payments interchangeably, the distinction is important for co-op. We started in EFT. In 1981, the concept of ATMs was becoming a reality in the United States. There were no ATM networks like there are today. Although a handful of banks had their own proprietary networks, there was no sharing going on. So a group of nine committed credit unions signed the Articles of Incorporation for Co-op, and they were among 32 visionary California credit unions combining resources and 20 ATMs, just 20 ATMs, to create co-op financial services, formerly known as co-op network. At that time, proprietary bank ATMs were being deployed, but of course they weren't serving credit unions or their members. Now, through this cooperative financial entity, co-op would become the first independent ATM network organized for the credit union community. It's that kind of commitment that we use today as we roll out even our new, pro our new products today. 
oh, our early success was due in large part to a handful of committed, philosophically aligned credit unions who stuck it out through the tough, uncertain times. They took the word cooperation seriously. It was difficult, with a lot of fits and starts, but our founders remained persistent. More than 30 years later, the original corporate tenant remains the same. Co-op Financial Services will succeed by working with its credit union constituency to meet the needs of their membership. Whether consisting of a handful of founding credit, union, uh, credit unions or the current 3,500 member institutions, Co-op Financial Services has dedicated itself to serving its clients first, while at the same time providing financial access and convenience to credit union consumers. This unified purpose is to provide access and convenience for members, which will help credit unions thrive. The first three lessons learned and applied were working together philosophically, and of course that meant finding people that were philosophically aligned and truly cooperative to make this work. We also, co-op also, uh, work together with the right partners under a very well-defined framework of contracts and rules. And I'll talk about that in, in just a second, why that was so important. And then finally, staying open to growth opportunities. Uh, this laid the groundwork for our approach to be a network uh, uh, aggregator. So during the 1980s, co-op represented 32 credit unions working together, but it also partnered with other cooperative credit union entities. Um, part of co-op's success was its partnership with a credit union entity, a credit union for credit unions, if you will, that provided the settlement that we needed. Uh, I, we used our trade association uh, in California to help provide uh, the, the initial management of the organization. The commitment of these early partners made the difference in our ability to succeed. Uh, the second lesson, or one of the other lessons, was you know not only did we work with the right partners, but we used very uh, a very well defined framework of rules and um, uh, contracts to allow uh, us and our our credit unions to. Uh, understand what, what what the expectations were. I bring this up because having strong contra contractual agreements with understandable rules and solid dispute processes in place were critical for co-op success. Um, I was around at the time and it wasn't unusual for credit unions to operate with less than definitive rules when working with each other. Co-op's buttoned-up approach let the participating credit unions know where the liability was as well as where the regulatory obligations uh, rested. For our first 10 years, we based our rules on what was already out there. But in 1990, we had grown uh, large enough uh, to, make, uh, to take those rules and make them fit the credit union movement uh, more closely. Of course, while still adhering to legal and regulatory requirements, but it was on our terms. Actively uh, pursuing growth opportunity was a lifesaver for co-op in its early years. In August of 1985, Co-op Network drew upon its, its cooperative philosophy to create an alliance with STAR Systems. I mentioned this earlier. STAR it, today uh, was a, it is a very large ATM uh, point-of-sale network in the United States, but at the time it was a small network made up of community banks operating out of San Diego. Nevertheless, Co-op became the only credit union network with a substantial equity interest in a large regional bank network. That was huge. In June of 1986, Co-op Network, uh, Bank of America, Southland, uh, which, Southland Corporation, which owns 7-Eleven convenience stores, uh, and uh, EDS signed a deal with uh, MoneyQuick to put ATMs in 7-Eleven stores. Uh, again, this was, these two, the Star Alliance and the 7-Eleven um, uh, ATM Money Quick uh, deal were two early examples of co-op being a network aggregator. And as I said, co-op knew then what it knows now, and that, and that is that it makes better sense to aggregate ne networks than rebuild them. Star brought uh, PIN, POS, debit, well, and 7-Eleven uh, brought locations and ATMs, but at the time, 
um, co-op then was able to focus its resources on growing its base of, of uh, client credit unions and users. In 1988, Co-op Network broke the 1 million monthly transaction bar barrier, but it was in the 1990s that Co-op truly expanded into a full-fledged payments processing company. During the 1980s, with our Star Alliance, we added po point of sale and pin debit. And then, of course, pin debit laid the groundwork for signature debit in the 1990s. Now, another important event occurred in 1990 that is playing into Co-op's role as a payments leader today. Co-op signed a management agreement for a new form of payments unique to the credit union system, and that was shared branching. The original FSCC. And although FSCC went out on its own in a couple of years, the association um, between Co-op and FSCC had an impact on both organizations. Co-op allowed FSCC to expand Co-op's traditional ATM rails to include comprehensive and detailed account information uh, on members. So now credit unions could use each other's branches to serve each other's members. Just as important, the transactions performed in shared branches were not, and still aren't, card-based transactions. They were account-based. This account-based approach and the rails on which the shared branch concept traveled are playing a critical role in co-op's payments processing future. We'll get to that in, in a second. The year 1998 represented a, an initial glimpse into the corporate vision for national co uh, consolidation and for my involvement with Co-op, actually. In 1998, Co-op Network merged with CU Access, a regional network in Oregon and Washington. I'm proud to say I was the CEO of, co of CU Access at the time and knew even before the merger that Co-op was where EFT and payments were heading for the credit union movement. That first merger in co-op financial services history was followed by the addition of several uh, other organizations and ATM networks from Credit Union Link in Colorado and Wyoming to Credit Union Services in Tennessee and Quantum in Michigan and a variety of others. So again, through its strategy of network aggregation and now consolidation, co-op continues to act as a force multiplier for credit unions.